is on your left. Lucas Michaels is on your right. It's Dredge versus Humans Company, yet again showing off the diversity of modern. Yeah, and this Humans Company has been making a little bit of a splash online recently. Uh, just, just lots of synergies, lots of disruption. Um, you get both values going on to really slow down the opponent. You get Sin Collector, and then you get you know, some of the Anthem effects to pump all of your humans. It's a forest and noble hierarch for Lucas Michaels to start. For Davis, he'll play a Scalding Tar. Looks like he's going to sacrifice that, fall down to at least 19. We'll see how low he can go. Yes, he's going to dig up a stomping ground. See if Jim's going to start things off with a Faithless Lewing, perhaps a Insolent Neonate. Many options here for the Dredge player. You can also see that he has a Conflagrate in hand, but it looks like he'll be starting things off with a Neonate. The Vampire is his first play, and we'll head back over to Lucas Michaels. Michaels will draw, and we'll see what this Human Company deck is capable of. Yeah, this is a pretty interesting matchup because these are almost two ships passing in the night. You know, they're each doing something that is uh, very powerful, uh, pretty linear, and doesn't interact with each other a whole lot. You know, like I said, Lucas does have some interaction, but basically he just wants to build up, you know, three, four, five big humans and just start attacking for as much as possible. Jim's not going to do a whole lot to stop him from doing that. On the flip side, Jim wants to just build this graveyard and get all of his card advantage that way. Game one, Lucas isn't going to stop him from doing that. Sin Collector here from Lucas. Ooh, that's timely. Yeah. And Davis might have some interest actually in discarding the conflict right now. We'll see. He also has, I believe, a copy of Cathartic Reunion in hand, so not the easiest of decisions here for Jim. And Davis in the tank, a very familiar place for the former player's champion. And you see his teammate in the background. Mm -hmm. Andrew Jessup waiting patiently on his match. I like these new jerseys that they're sporting. I'm a pretty big fan. It's always good to make upgrades. Now, I didn't dislike the other jerseys as much as other people did, but these jerseys, A+. Plus. A+, plus, rock solid. You see the hand here from Sin Collector. There's a conflagrate, a couple copies of Blood Crypt, a Golgari Thug, Cathartic Reunion, and a Scalding Tarn here. See exactly what Michaels wants to select with the Sin Collector. He will take the Cathartic Reunion. Very powerful card, of course. Yeah, I actually like that. Uh, Jim already has a dredger in his hand. Um, it's dangerous to just let them dredge that many cards on the second turn. And sure, you're scared of this conflagrate, but if you if you let him cast the reunion, there's a very good shot he just mills into another conflagrate off of it. Davis will draw. No interest in sacrificing the neonate or anything just yet, and he's picked up a copy of Stinkweed Imp. Maybe paid off for his patience there. Yeah. Can't forget about that point of damage he's going to get. Neonate does have Menace, after all. But this stretch deck, this is a this is a thinking man stretch deck right here. This is not very straightforward, though it is powerful. Looks like Davis is going to discard Conflagrate. He'll draw another copy of Conflagrate. <laughs> well, how about that? Now he's going to sacrifice Scalding Tarn, and we might see him just ditch the whole hand here to kill the battlefield. Well, at least two cards. Mm -hmm. You know, he's going to get both of his dredge creatures into the graveyard here. Um, not much of a reason to discard more beyond that. The deck does like to keep playing lands, so he's going to keep some of those in the hand. Maybe he'll discard the other Conflagrate just so that's in the graveyard for him. And now here's the flashback on Conflagrate by Jim. And he's going to discard the two dredge cards there and Thug and Imp, kill those two creatures, and pass the turn back over to Lucas Michaels. 
who will begin his third turn of the game. And I just look silly after saying these decks are going to do whatever they want and not interact <laughs> with each other. Yeah, interacting right away. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> Sin Collector, all right, Confrogate, kill your two guys. Yeah. Here's a Manic Influence. Something that ties the room together for this Humans Company deck. Plays a lot of colors. Reflector Mage with nothing to target is not very exciting for Lucas Michaels. Yeah, between Cavern of Souls and, and Mana Confluence, they just have access to all the colors they could want. Mm -hmm. Makes it pretty easy for him. Looks like it might be time for Jim to fir do his first dredge. Stinkweed Imp is going to turn over a Wooded Foothills, a Bloodgast, a Prized Amalgam, a Faithful Suiting, and a Scalding Tarn. That was a good one. That's a pretty good dredge, <laughs> folks. <laughs> but the only thing he missed there was Narcomoeba. There's still time. Yeah. Dredges like that, you can see why Jim Davis is a big fan of this deck. Makes a lot of sense. That poor Reflector Mage over there. <laughs> Just want to pound something or, or be legal and standard. Yeah. One or two. Just let me do some work, man. Yeah. Bloodgast going to come back from playing that Blood Crypt on tap, which means Price Amalgam will trigger. That'll come back on the end of the turn. And I think we might see that Faithless Looting here, perhaps. And we will. And Jim, will he start by dredging? Yes, he will. So Thug means four cards will be going into the graveyard. Bloodgast, Steam Vents. Copperline Gorge, Insolent Neonate, and now he'll just have to draw a card normally. So draw two, and now it'll be time to discard two here in just a moment for Davis. The Dakmore Salvage is the card that he's drawn. <laughs> and we're going to see Stinkweed Imp and perhaps Conflagrate go to the graveyard. Now he is missing some pieces to the puzzle, Craig. Doesn't have a life from the loam yet. Correct, but I, I do like just getting this Conflagrate into the graveyard. If Lucas manages to deploy two, two creatures next turn, he can just clean up the board again and keep going with all of his dredging. Back to Michaels will go. Hasn't done anything too impressive so far this game. There's a Razor Verge thicker that unfortunately for him is going to end the battlefield tapped if he had a collective company, so all he can do is pass the turn back. Davis will untap. We may see him a dredge again. And we do. Narcomoeba's one. Two Narcomoeba. <laughs> Prize him out. Oh, Bloodgast and a Copperline Gorge. Magic is uh, pretty straightforward and simple sometimes. Uh, it, it just snowballs out of control so quick. It does. With this deck, it does. And once it gets going, it's like an episode of The Walking Dead. There's no stopping it. The zombies just come forever and ever and ever. I mean, we were talking last night about Golgari Grave Troll. Yeah, I, it, it's just kind of funny that they unban the card. You know what? We think the time is right. <laughs> Now's good. Yeah. And it's just a couple months later, and it's like, eh, we were wrong. I'll style it back a little we, bit. We were wrong. Yeah. Don't want Dredge to be too good. And now, even without it, Dredge is one of the top contenders in the room. It is, and it, it, it's this kind of innocuous deck that sometimes doesn't look that good, but, you know, it does have this, uh, this fireball and these creatures that are just going to always come back. Well, that one's not coming back in Prize Amalgam, thanks to Path to Exile. And Davis is going to try to search for a basic here. Remember, this deck does play some number of basics. Yeah, the, the Dredge deck is just so relentless. It, it goes from no battlefield to... Five, six, seven creatures, just no problem. You saw the Path to Exile there from Lucas Michaels takes care of the prize amalgam. Great, you killed one creature, brought two back. Thanks for the land. Here come the blood gas. <laughs> now Davis will lose that other blood gas here momentarily, thanks to the Reflector Mage getting in front of it. But also keep in mind that other prize amalgam will be coming back here shortly. Excuse me. And Jim can actually consider hard casting threats now if he'd like. Just get him with Stinky. P U. <laughs> I've given the beatdowns with many a Stinky Imp in my day. Yeah, that, that's another upside to this deck. The cards are fun. You get zombies, you get vampires, you get Stinky from the air. Look at that thing. Oof. Edward P. Beard Jr. did some nice work on that artwork. <laughs> It stanks. Give that man a race. Yeah. <laughs> it's 
Cinque Dimp is in along with everything else here for Davis. Looks like he might play a land here in Dockmore Salvage. Get back his Bloodgast. And that Prize Mog will be coming back. And, uh, yeah, just build a board. Yeah, just, just seven creatures. Yeah, this is the most right the dredges felt. You know, you remember the first versions way back when in the mid-2000s, and we've seen vintage versions and legacy versions, all that stuff that are these hyper-aggressive combo decks. Some of them don't even have mana. Like, this feels more in tune with what dredge is meant to be. It's kind of this, it's a basically like a zombie deck that's kind of relentless. Yes. It doesn't feel over the top powerful. No, I mean, you remember when Dread Return was legal. That's not okay, yes. Yeah, it was just like, find a way to mill my whole deck, get the Narc Amoebas, Dread Return something, game's over. You can't interact. Yeah. Or you can and it was too slow. Yeah, yeah. it was just ridiculous. Ooh, the mayor. Yes. Show a little respect. Mayor of Aberbrook has arrived. Other human creatures you control get plus one, plus one. That's all well and good. That means Reflector Mage is a little bit larger. And the uh, human advisor werewolf <laughs> can transform soon enough. But uh, these creatures, you tried to play the creature game against Dredge, you got very little chance to win. H human werewolf was not enough. It's got advice. It's a mare. Yeah. It's a mare. It's good flavor. If Jim were on Magic Online, he'd click the attack all button. <laughs> but <laughs> instead... Unless he wants to exert something. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, he's going to play a life from the low. Yeah, a life from the low, last piece of the puzzle here yeah. for him. That was the only thing that was missing, because now he can get back a couple of lands. We might see a very large conflagrate to clear out the board and eventually clear out Lucas Michaels' life total. Here is conflagrate. Man, Dread Return was a good card. Heck of a card. My favorite thing about Dread Return, Conflagrate's going to finish off these creatures, was running the um, the trick, basically. So a lot of people, when you'd sideboard against Dredge back in Extended, the goal is to shut off Dread Return, mm -hmm. and you would just kill people with Drowned Rusalka and Bridge from Below, and you had no Dread Return in your deck. Yeah. They'd bring in stuff like Meddling Mage and Gaddock Teague and all these other things, and it's like, nah, it's not about that anymore. Yeah. It's about grinding you down into a pulp. Hardcasting Sneak Weed Imps, and my favorite, the Grave Troll. Big bad Grave Troll. If I end up with six or eight 2-2 two -two zombies, can you beat that? Nope. nope. They cannot, and Lucas Michaels cannot beat all those blood gas. Jim Davis going to win game number one here over Lucas Michaels. Dredge, very quickly up a game over Human's Company. But as we mentioned right at the top, he has come to play in this matchup, has Lucas. You see the three rest in peace. There's also two Stony Silence, two Marion Crusader, two Is It Static Aster, two Core Firewalker, two Reclamation Sage, and two Campbell. Council of Allocation. I think the only the uh, only the first three probably matter. Yeah, I would just bring in the rest in the piece. They're obviously super effective in this matchup. It's definitely the number one card to have against a dredge deck. Pretty straightforward. I mean, maybe Mirror Crusader because pro black is nice. Yeah, it can, it can get to work really quick, mm -hmm. especially if it's pumped by some effect. Yeah. I might want to consider those two. Staticaster can take care of. Narc Amoeba can take care of. Blood gas, so there might be some value to having that one around as well. As you see, Lucas Miles going to the drawing board for Jim Davis. He's got three Maelstrom Pauls, two Collective Brutality, two Thoughtseize, two Lightning Axe, two Engineer Explosives, Eventual Pharaoh, a Bajuga Bog, an Ancient Grudge, and a Ghost Quarter. So Maelstrom Pulse has turned into the catch all for these dredge decks, mm -hmm. and I really like it. it. It takes out Planeswalkers, Artifacts, Creatures, uh, Enchantments. Um, so I, I would definitely expect him to bring that in. It, it's the card that cleans up whatever hate your opponent is bringing in. So definitely the three Maelstrom Pulse. I like the two Collective Brutality uh, in this matchup. It's just so versatile. He can use any of the modes to great effect. Um, maybe he wants some a, a little more of this removal, the Engineered Explosives or something like that. But, you know, I, I just expect the top five cards in this list to come in. And move on from there. Yeah. Eh, makes sense. Might see that for uh, at least the top three for both players as they finish sideboarding. Shuffling up, and then we get ready here for game number two. And while they do that, we're going to talk about our Season 1 Invitational in Roanoke, Virginia. It's right around the corner here, June 30th through July 2nd. I'll be joined by Craig Kremples, Matthias Hunt, Ryan Overturf, Nick Miller, the rest of the SG Tour crew, because we got a lot going on there. Instead of me talking about it, you can hear about it right now.
June 30th through July 2nd. We hope to see you in Roanoke, Virginia for our season one invitational. Going to have a new, uh, let's see, we're going to have a new invitational token. We got artists. We got some cool parties going on. You can, you can stop by the old Star City Games home base. Yeah, I, I actually just out. got an email this week. Yeah? Letting me know that I'm qualified for the Invitational. You are qualified. I'm sure that email is from Jared Silva. I also yep. found out I was qualified. Nice. I'm thinking about ditching the whole coverage thing. Let's get in there. Yeah, maybe I'll see you there. I'm going to play Dredge and uh, and Marvel. Okay. And that's it. I think that'll be good enough. And uh, I don't know. Somebody else will figure out how to cover the tournament. It's going to be awkward that you're playing Marvel after it's banned in a few days. That will be. That will mean that my tournament doesn't last long. <laughs> that's all. That'll be totally fine. Uh, for Jim Davis, maybe he'll, maybe he'll play those two decks. I mean, at least Dredge. That's for sure for the former Players Champion. 32-year-old from Long Island, New York, with 11 open top eights, two open wins, three invitational top eights, still looking for that first invitational win. He plays bass, sings backup vocals in a rock band, magic full-time with the articles, the streams, the coaching, and is the captain of Team MGG. And he's made this into a full-time gig, some fun projects on the side, like DJing and playing hockey and all that good stuff. But him and his team have made their mark here, and they've done it on the Grand Prix circuit as well, with Ben Friedman, second-place finish, earlier this year at Grand Prix New Jersey. So Team Metagame Guru is doing just fine as far as Magic is concerned. Looks like Dave is going to take a mulligan pretty quickly or something that Dredge does a lot, so no surprise to see that. Yeah, they, they don't need a lot of cards to do what they do. They just need the right cards. This deck is about finding the right cards. Yeah. And, and the first couple of right cards, once you start dredging, everything else finds the cards that you actually need. I appreciate seeing uh, Team MGG. I, I feel like their combined powers is greater than their accomplishments would have been individually. I agree. Which is exactly what you want out of a team. Absolutely. Um, we see teams on the pro level a lot for pro tours and things like that. And I, I really appreciate that these guys are like, hey, there's no reason we can't do this for the Star City circuit. Mm -hmm. Like, it just makes sense. Yeah. And, you know, they've got a high-quality team. Andrew Jessup, Danny Jessup, you got Frank Scarn, Ben Friedman. It's a good team, man. It's a good team. And, of course, Jim leading the way. You see him at just about every SCG Tour stop. I know we'll see all of them at the Invitational a couple weeks from now, and they will be a force to be reckoned with. Andrew Jessup finally got his first SCG Tour Open win, arguably the best player on the team. He can really play some magic, and he's having another great tournament here. And I feel like the team has done a good job of, of innovating at points and being ahead of the curve when they need to be. Yep. Um, the the Bant Collected Company in Standard, they were some of the earliest adopters of that, really showed its power. Uh, in Modern, they had the Jeskai Control deck with Nahiri, and that deck was very impressive for a while. No one was prepared for it. Yeah, Peter Ingram winning that Open in Indianapolis last year with that deck. Very, very impressive stuff. His rest in peace is very impressive as well. Conflagrate's going to bite the dust. Another copy of Noble Hierarch there for Lucas Michaels. And this is the haymaker he was looking for. Yeah. Yeah, Jim, Jim's in a whole lot of trouble here. He needs to draw another land, and he needs to draw a way to get the rest in peace off of the board. Are you saying that Golgari Thug, Christ and Malgrim are not going to be good enough to get this done on their own? I'm is that what you're saying? I'm skeptical. You know, if, if if you want to take that side, I'll, I'll take not, the other I'm not, side. I'm not here to take sides. I'm just here to ask questions. I set them up, you knock them down. There we go. That's what's going on here. I don't know hierarch feeling it in for two. Put the clock on him. <laughs> Got to start somewhere. <laughs> what do we have now? A reflector mage. This re <laughs> these have been some of the worst reflector mages I have ever seen. That poor guy just... He wants to get some work done. Just looking to bounce a Death Shadow for a couple of turns and just not allowed. Or a Gurmag. Oof. Gurmag Angler. Oh, they'll probably be able to cast it the next, well, two turns. You bounce a Gurmag Angler if they, after they delve their whole graveyard, and it'll be back soon. <laughs> so easy. Yes. They only paid one mana for it. Yeah, so easy. Davis will draw. What can he find? It's a Blood Gas. Ugh. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> Well, if those Maelstrom Pulses aren't in now, they certainly will be for game number three. I think I saw one when he was fetching up a land. Golgari Thug, for now, going to hold it down for Jim Davis. <laughs> a little, little speed bump, boom, boom. Yeah, <laughs> just going to slow the tide. 
Oh, Lucas Michaels. Oh, he's going to keep attacking. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're not scared? Yeah. <laughs> Why aren't you scared? Jim going to take four here. Going to fall down to 11. Razor Verge Thicket and pass. The Golgari are intimidating people, you know? Yeah. They, uh, sure they are. Sure they are. Faithless Looting. Nice. Got to cast it. <laughs> and lose a couple cards, including the Faithless Looting itself. That'll resolve. Two cards on the way here for Jim. Okay, well, the joking is over because he's found a Maelstrom Pulse. Yeah, step one. Still needs a third land. Yep. And even after all of that, he would still need a couple of turns. To get it set up? Yeah, yeah, to, to start doing what he does. And he doesn't have a ton of life to work with. Now. He's going to lose two life in the loams because it's not about that right now. And he doesn't have that third land just yet, as you mentioned. Lucas Michaels is going to untap. He will draw. Come on, Reflector Mage. Might be time to block here for Jim. Or is he going to wait? Looks like he's going to wait. Going to fall down to seven. Big follow-up. Second rest in peace. Maelstrom Pulse looking real good now. <laughs> that's, that's actually kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> looking real good if Jim draws a land, which he did. All right. This is going to get a little interesting, I think. Dave's going to sacrifice Sculling Tarn very quickly. Going to fall down to six. And a lot of the answers for rest in peace potentially get both of them. Mm -hmm. You know, engineer explosives. We get both. Maelstrom Pulse gets both. There's, there's a lot of reasons to, to sandbag the second one. For sure. And I'm sure Lucas will do that. For the third game? <laughs> Moving forward yes, from here. Yes, yeah. So Maelstrom Pulse will blow up both of those copies of Rest in Peace. And now Davis is going to try to work his way back into it. And Golgari Thug makes for a great blocker now. <gasps> Never mind. Oh, no. Never mind. Path Exile will take care of that. <laughs> Davis is going to search up a basic here. I think it'll be another mountain. It will be. He'll fall to two from the attack unless something strange happens. Yeah, maybe an, one or two Anthem creatures? No. No. All right, Davis is down to two. Can he come all the way back? There's a windswept teeth. Pass the turn back. Let's go back to Jim. And, and Lucas has done nothing impressive this game. Nothing at it's, all. It's been very fair. It just shows how powerful Rest in Peace is against the dredge decks. One of the issues is white is just not super popular right now. And some of the decks that play white have interest in using their own graveyards. It's a stinkweed imp. Jim considering if he wants to play the Copperline Gorge or not. But the plan was to block with the thug and get the dredge engine online. Now he's got to cross his fingers and hope. <laughs> and he gets the opportunity to block with old stinky. Pass that turn back. Lucas Michaels will sacrifice the windswept heath. Oh, down to 19. There goes the perfect game. Mm, it's too bad. He blew it. Did see a Mirror and Crusader there from Lucas Michaels, so at least one of those in from the sideboard. Sure. Can't say I'm too surprised, but always good to have confirmation. Michaels will untap. Time for him to draw. Did not get a great look at the draw step. A little higher, Kenny. I cannot block fast enough. They'll trade. <laughs> Breeding pool pass. All right, he's got a shot to get back yeah. into this. Lucas, we need to get one or two creatures, <laughs> one or two more creatures on the board. Blood gas, pulse, tarn, conflagrate, conflagrate, excuse me, and insolent neonate. Hmm. Hmm. I'm curious if Jim was supposed to play that land. He thought about playing Copperline Gorge and elected not to. He thought for a long time. Yeah. But he did mill into one of his vampires, which is one of the reasons not to play the land. Yeah, that blood gas. So here's Conflagrate. What's he want to discard? He's going to discard everything but life in the loam. Three and one. Okay. Now, loam. I like this. Yeah, get back Copperline Gorge and a Scalding Tarn. Figure out what land he wants to play. Because he hasn't played a land just yet. So he's going to play Copperline Gorge, trigger the Bloodgast, and get back the prized amalgam, pass the turn back. Lucas Michaels has nothing to do. He'll draw. <laughs> if Jim wins this game. After two rest in peace? Yeah. And doing nothing? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm signing up for Dredge in Las Vegas. That's what I'm signing up for. <laughs> What's this? 
Stat uh, reflector mage, got him. Not static caster, no red. It looked like that was a static caster in his hand. Davis, a little dredge party perhaps? Yeah, if, if I'm Jim, you know, I, I want to close out this game as fast as possible at this point. I don't want any collected companies or anthem effects or anything like that rolling off the top. He's going to turn over five prize amalgam, Maelstrom Pulse, Stink Queen, Blood Gas, and a Golgari Thug. To go along with another amalgam and a land. Blood Gas, yeah, there's some freebies. Yep. There's a block. Michaels will fall down to 17. Land, trigger. Get him back. Amalgam soon. I think it might be time to cast old Stinky. There it is. Got to get a blocker on the board. Yep, building up a board. And that is the only blocker, so if a Path Exile happens. Another Reflector Mage? Yeah, that'll it's, do. It's his time to shine. <laughs> Finally. Come on, Reflector Mage. Lucas Michael's having a hard time crossing the finish line here. Well, his draws are just seem very anemic, these yeah. two games. Let's see what this is. Thalia's Lieutenant, sure. That reflection <laughs> mage is bigger, but not interested in attacking. Davis is going to go, oop, boot, do. Yeah, better make sure you got a blue land left in that steam vents. Yeah, he's going to go down to one. All right. That Lieutenant represents another lethal creature, but now the prized amalgams are going to be untapped. He's going to play the one from his hand. Mm -hmm. Davis furiously shuffling will present the deck. Come on, humans. Pull it together. <laughs> draw, how about just draw some humans? You're making us all look bad. Dredge here is the Stinkweed Imp. One, Gorge, Foothills, Mark Meeva, Stinkweed, Engineered Explosives. A lot of answers to rest in peace after board. Yep. Mark Meeva is now onto the battlefield. Davis is going to try to keep this rocking and rolling. Trying to come all the way back because he's at one right now. Blood gas? You ready? <laughs> Here we go. Now, one thing to note, too, is that Lucas Michaels has a copy of Is It Static Caster in hand? Yeah. Which could check those blood gas forever. Yeah. However, he's not drawn the red source just yet. So he'll take four. He's going to fall down to 13 from those two blood gas. Yeah, he had a fetch land earlier in the game but he doesn't have a, a fetchable red source. Mm, off of a windswept teeth? I don't think he has any. I think he's on. Oh, is he just doing off cavern? Cavern and mana confluence. Wow, okay. Although I can barely read his handwriting, so I could be completely wrong. Fair here. enough, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> Prize Amalgam pass, and it's a Razor Verge sticking and passing the turn. Jim Davis is getting some momentum here. He's quickly untapping yet again. Jim with only the one black source. He's going to dredge now. He needs life from the loam, so he's going to go that way now. Looks like he does have interest in doing some sort of large dredge. How about three cards instead? One is Amalgam. Two is Blood Crypt. Three, Conflagrate. Oh, so good. Been right about the deck for weeks. He's a big fan. He likes its resiliency. Yeah, and we see it. it it goes a couple turns where you're just like, oh, he can't, he's so far behind. He can't win this game. And then two turns later, you're just like, wow. He's killed all the opponent's stuff, has a whole bunch of creatures. He's in the driver's seat. Yeah, now he's trying to come all the way back. So Davis will attack with two blood gas and a prize amalgam, which, of course, any of these that'll die have the opportunity to come back. You see on defense, an amalgam, an archimiba, and a stinkweedem. Got the air and the ground covered. What's in Lucas Michael's hand? Well, besides an instant caster, we don't really know. He ain't doing anything. Yeah, it's, it's not a help, whatever it is. Yep. He's got the blue and breeding pool for the uh, is a static caster. He's missing the red. That damage is going to come across. Seven of it, of course. And I'm curious, did he maybe leave himself in conflagrate range? Four, 
four cards in hand for Davis. Blood Crypt under the battlefield tapped. Get back. Blood Ghast. Hello, prized amalgam. Follow up. Stinky. <laughs> Pass the turn back. All right, now I got to wonder what Lucas Michaels can draw. As he will draw a card. I think that was another copy of Razor Verge Thicket. His deck, yeah, jeez, oh, oh, beats. Man. Two is a static casters, Razor Verge Thicket, and none of those are going to get the job done. Jim Davis going to win this match over Lucas Michaels. Two games to zero. Dredge going to take care of Human's Company. After not one, but two, rest in peace, which just one Maelstrom Pulse can take care of. Yeah, and, and Lucas's deck really just did not cooperate with him at all. 